As we are walking towards the plane, we thought we heard calling Fullington family. And Edward says, they're calling our name. I said, what are they calling us for? We're, we're gone. We're, and so we... <laughs> so when we got to the plane, the guards were at the door. They tried to come to take us off. But the law is where an American plane goes to any country on the land that it stands on, stops and parts, that is American soil. You can't touch. My name is Elizabeth Fullington, and uh, now I'm a naturalized American, but previously my home place of birth was Guyana. You know what the song, they say, Oh beautiful Guyana, oh land of the free. That's the word, I mean beautiful. You should see Guyana, Guyana is beautiful. <laughs> but you left it, you had, because of what man did with politics, you had to run and uproot everything that you work hard for. At 23, we had, we had our life set out, where you're going to be, what you're going to do. Yes, we made a conscious choice to flee and not stay, but when you think of your family and your children and the future, that was the, that's the exit. Not a casual exit, like, uh, oh, let us go to America. No. It was a safe haven, get out, or else you would, you, something bad may happen. Your husband may be the next Walter Rodney, blown up because he had too much of a mouth. We struggled and fought to become an American. It meant a lot. We broke down when we took our vows. See the flag? That was for, from our citizenship. It was a big decision. You may have had a lifestyle when you come to America and especially you're coming with the hardships of a government where you're running away. You come with nothing and you are just leveled to the dirt. You're literally leveled. You're no, who knows you? Nobody. Who are you? People may remember who you were from back home, but you're nobody. You have to start with zero. I said, hello, I'm Elizabeth Fullington and she looked up. I said, I'm here for the position, for the interview this afternoon. She didn't even stand to shake my hand or anything, you're welcoming me. They, she was expecting me, but she didn't expect to see who I was. So I walked back now, feeling sort of strange, and I told the guy, I said, hey, you just sent me in for an interview, and she told me the position is filled. He says, honey, welcome to America. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh. I'm so grateful that we went to New York or else I wouldn't be the person I am today. Tough. <laughs> the road may not always be covered with petals of roses, but you make good with it. You learn. You have a job, be grateful. I met a young man whose name was Scott Cohen, Little. He was playing for release by Beethoven. And I sat with him and said, look, you made a mistake right there. Let me show you, go back. And he says, where? He can't read. So I came into his life to be a remedial teacher. Next thing you know, they're asking me to be his teacher. You're coming from nothing into making something in a world that is a brand new world. It's like if I came out from again all again, but it wasn't easy. Because when you're an immigrant, remember, you're not seen, you're like invisible. One day I'm going to help those kids to see, get the vision. Do you know what it is to give back and to instill vision in a kid who never thought he could be anybody? It was hard work to get them to go, raising funds, talking to Delta to get group fares, and I got my first group to go. You see them at the airport, it's like, wow. You see them on campus doing music in a foreign country, and they're, they're eating it up. They left home hungry for the opportunity. That was my reward, that was my joy, because um, you don't know. It's only the rich could do it. An immigrant, they, they mark themselves, they put themselves down as a failure. Oh, I would never be able to. No, yes you can. <laughs> I did it, you could do it. Being an immigrant, I thank God, honestly, because I did not lose my roots and I was planted in America and 
made it happen.